Are you interested in knowing whether polyphasic sleep could actually be dangerous? In the last video we talked about the effects of reducing light sleep. In this video we'll be having a look at how cognitive performance could shed some more light on this question. My name is Jelte Klas and I'm one of the long-term administrators over on the Polyphasic Discord, as well as the main author of Polyphasic.net, the main community recommended resource for everything polyphasic. How could the cognitive performance of adapted polyphasic sleepers be used to determine if polyphasic sleep might be dangerous? Well, if you are sleep deprived, your cognitive performance will go down. So all you need to do to determine if you are continually sleep deprived is track your cognitive performance before, during and after an adaptation and the results should become evident. So what are the results so far? The polyphasic sleep community is currently working on making a mobile application to make it a lot easier to track this. These results will then be compared to the monophasic baseline readings to hopefully draw some good conclusions about the effects on polyphasic sleep. Now to be clear, during the adaptation period it's expected that results will be way lower than the monophasic baseline. This is because people will be sleep deprived then. The results become interesting when people are adapted because then we can determine if they are still sleep deprived but just don't notice it or if they are fully up to spec. As this app is still in development sadly there are no results I can show you yet at time of filming. What I can show you is that there is actually a bachelor's thesis on this very subject. The thesis is called Losing Sleep, a preliminary investigation of the cognitive effects that arise from a polyphasic sleep cycle and is written by Taylor Stephen Smith in 2013. The results of this paper show that cognitive performance improved while doing a polyphasic sleep cycle. However, there are some small notes with this study. First, no baseline was recorded before starting the schedule. The monophasic people doing the study got similar improvements simply from taking the test so many times. Second, the sample size with only one person is of course extremely small. Third, during the month-long experiment the subject gained almost 5 kilos of weight. He does note that the experiment took place during the winter holidays and there's no comparison group to weigh it against. We'll discuss how weight gain could be related to sleep deprivation in an upcoming video so make sure to subscribe. What's the future for this topic? We hope to finish this application soon, which will hopefully shed some light on this question. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we will be going over some peer-reviewed research on shortening sleep. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. And as always, sleep well.